Hello everybody, this is Hybrid, and yeah, basically, I was thinking about maybe like a new show I could do, because, you know, Comic Book Versus is still in, I guess, what you'd call production, or at least Season 2 is, since we already did Season 1, so yeah, we'll probably come out with a teaser trailer for that soon, but in the meantime, I came with the idea of maybe doing something I'm going to call Number 1s. And I'll start with Superman, because I thought that would fit. And basically my inspiration for this is the fact that with the new 52, a lot of people expected, I guess, changed origins. And, I guess, maybe new abilities for characters, or new looks, things like that. And they didn't really do that all that much with a lot of characters. And the ones they did change around, a lot of people don't like. For example, Alan Scott, Beast Boy... Superman. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about his new suit. Um, I I like the suit personally, but then again, I know people also don't like the fact that you have like Wally West isn't even in there. Donna Troy's not even in there, and one woman's new suit. I know some people don't like. Um, see, there's basically there's a lot of things about the new Fifty Two that people just don't like. And a lot, and a big part of it that I've heard is the origins, and I know that they're going to do an issue number zero thing soon, but kind of I I thought it'd be nice if I just kind of say if I were to be able to relaunch these titles, or not the titles but the characters, how would I make their origins and how would I explain their powers and things like this? So I thought I start with Superman, and I'll do this every week which would, I basically, I'm going to go through every Justice League member first for of the New 52, and then I'll go on to other characters. And comment below as well with characters, characters of DC you'd like me to, I guess, do. And then, who knows, maybe I'll branch off the other comics like Dark Horse or IDW or Marvel, etc. So yeah, without further ado, let's begin. So... Strength, speed, durability, senses, and breath, basically, from, you know, Superman's kind of the core of his powers, you could say. I would bring all that to his physiology, his Kryptonian body. And basically how I would explain it would be Krypton, it's massive. They usually portray it as being much larger than Earth. So with it being much larger than Earth, as a higher gravity. And... Let's say with the higher gravity, obviously that means um, Kryptonians, they'd have to naturally be, at least compared to us, stronger. So that's where we can go with that, with them being stronger, faster, more durable. And senses wise, you know, I can't really explain it, but let's say they just have very acute senses. That just happens to be part of their physiology. And then same thing with breath, obviously the lungs would be much stronger. So, that's how you get there. Also, this is how they could kind of fit with Superboy, with how they have Superboy so far, with the tactile telekinesis. I would use that to explain his flight, and also to boost his speed, strength, and durability. But before I really go into that, let me talk about what I, how I think they can explain the sun's effects on him. So, first off, let's say that the red sun doesn't give off as much energy as the yellow sun. Actually, let's say it gives off maybe a, less than a tenth or, you know, just a very low amount compared to the yellow sun. So, the Kryptonians naturally, I guess they, they adapted to where they're like a battery. They absorb as much energy as they can get and they save it up so they can use it. So, if Superman goes into, like, the yellow sun on Earth, for example, you know, it, it's all just, like, Supercharging, it's like unlimited supply, which in turn, somehow, I guess, the, I guess, kind of, when the Kryptonians got their absorbing ability, I guess you could say their kind of battery-like ability, it kind of made an aura around them. Let's call that their tactile telekinesis field. So, when they step into the yellow sun, that's where it gets amplified, and that's where they actually get the tactile telekinesis from which would give him flight I guess you could say 
And then also it boosts their strength, their speed, their durability. And also with that, let's say it also, you know, it supercharges their cells, obviously. So that gives them faster healing, metabolism as well, um, longevity, because their cells are just keep on I guess, healing and healing and healing. There wouldn't be that much really of a decay. So that's where I go with there, with that at least. And then for their like heat vision, x-ray vision, that also goes into the kind of aura they have around their bodies now. They can manipulate it a little bit. And that's where they, they can, I guess you could say, pressurize it, or at least not pressurize it, concentrate it, and it kind of makes a heat. And then also you could say that, you know, you have the x-ray vision, which in turn, you know, that's also just a manipulation of the energy on their eyes. So that's where I'm going with their powers at least, or his powers. So I hope you guys like that idea. And if you do slash don't comment below on, I guess, why and other things pertaining to that. And I'll get to like his origin, how I would explain it. So basically I have two main ways of, I guess, explaining it. And that would be, you know, you could have the whole civil war on Krypton thing. That'd be really interesting as Krypton is usually portrayed as a very advanced civilization of science and technology. So what you could have is basically the technology has become so great on Krypton, so powerful that the weapons they used for warfare when the civil war just erupted, which are so destructive and it just made the core of the, of the planet Krypton unstable. And that's what ended up killing the planet. And then you could also have it, and I really like this theory, and I thought it was actually a really good idea when you think about it, because I don't know about New 52 universe, but I know pre-New 52 universe, the White Martians, a very, very long time ago, manipulated the, I guess, the genetics of humans, making it so humans would be how they are today, and not like a Daxamite or Kryptonian when they're under yellow sun. Because the white Martians feared the humans and what they could possibly become. So, basically, I like how in Red Sun, you had in the future, or not in the future, it, I think it was Red Sun at least, correct me if I'm wrong, but it turns out Krypton is actually Earth far in the future, which would explain it being a highly advanced science and technology civilization, and why the sun would be red. And then also, that could... I guess, directly explain why if you are sending a child across a whole like universe, basically, or galaxy, well, how would you keep them so, like, it's really hard to, I guess, cryo-freeze them or keep them in a stasis to where he doesn't age at all? So this would also be able to explain how they're able to so quickly get him to where he is. And that's just kind of my thoughts they could do, they could use at least. I preferably would actually go with a blend of both, maybe, where, you know, it's in the future, and in the future, this war happens, and as let's say jor he sends Superman, or kal to the past to be the savior of the human race, and his hopes is that if he sends him, and, hope, and let's say he sends him with a bunch of things about the future, which to everybody else, it's about Krypton, but really it's about the future of Earth. And ways to save it, keep it from becoming what it will end up becoming. So, I thought that'd be cool. That would truly make Superman the savior of everybody, as he's usually portrayed as. So that's my take on it. I hope you guys liked it. If you did slash did not like it, comment below. Um, like the video if you did. Subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be making a lot of videos like this um, soon. So. Yeah, check my other videos out as well, and this is Hybrid. See ya.